Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about the last topic about raising your daughters for now at least. How to raise your daughter the right way. Number 1 Don't give her instructions how to act when she's busy doing something. One of the most unpleasant things I experienced did during mopping the floor or other chores I'm getting instructions how to clean, and eventually I didn't feel like learning at all and I rather figure things out myself. Before you start letting her sweep the floor or other chores, show her how it's done first and then she can repeat. Don't say anything while she is busy and when she's done you'll give her feedback, what went great should be discussed first and what she needs to work on last and next time she should pay attention to the error she made and improve. It's called the deconstruct and recall method, you are giving her enough room to improve and be aware of her strength and shortcomings, but if you're the type of person who keeps giving orders and mention the things she does wrong while she's busy or take the broom out of her hands to show it how it's done then you are sending signals to her unconscious mind that she can't do anything right, and that prevents her from learning and ruin the desire to be taught something. So if you are going to do groceries shopping or you are going to have dinner explain to her beforehand what behavior you expect from her not when she is having dinner, being told what you did wrong in front of other feels very belittling, so imagine how she feels when a parent who she's supposed to trust acts that way. Especially when the others take your side and say that you are right. She feels like you are turning people against her and Loi feels betrayed and as a result she prefers not wanting to be around you in the long run. If she feels she can be herself when you are not around then you are the problem. Number 2 Don't hit her if she hasn't done something bad like breaking the law or abused someone. A lot of parents assume that hitting is needed to teach a child right from wrong. But in most cases parents hit their children when they get on the parent's nerve or to control their children's vocabulary or tone in their voice. Parents hit their children in aggravation or feel insulted by their kids' remark. That's no longer discipline that's child abuse. If you want to teach your kids to be respectful then set very clear rules. One of them is if you don't have anything nice to say then please shut your mouth or go to your room. And if she doesn't comply then take away her privileges, it's a lot worse than hitting in a child's mind. When my uncle's daughters were little they were misbehaving while on their way to Wendy's, and he warned them to stop they refused so he made a new turn and drove back home. As a punishment they had to stay in their room all day, and instead of burgers and french fries they only had milk and bread for dinner and their trip to the movies for the next day also got cancelled, from that moment they never misbehaved again, give one warning and if she doesn't listen then make her deal with the consequences without giving her a second chance no matter how much she cries or protest, like driving back home or cancel the Halloween party you set up for her, when she knows she only has one chance to be at her best behavior and you can't be persuaded from your decision then she's forced to behave without holding resentment for you, being hit is humiliating especially when she can't hit back, she might love you but deep inside she will despise you, and if you think denying her privileges to teach her a good lesson is cruel then you are the part of the problem, because hitting to make your child go back into submission is beyond cruel, don't hit the as you can or because it's easier for you make her watch her mouth, use it as a final resort when warnings and taking privileges away doesn't work, the only time I would ever hit my daughter if she has no nerve to raise a hand against me, then all bets are off but besides that I would take her privileges away, if she's a teen I'll kick her out and she can come back when she learns to behave. Number 3 Don't let having a sibling be unfortunate for her. You can't help it when you favor your youngest daughter over your eldest or vice versa but you can control your actions. For example a friend of mine asked if I want to help her daughters with math. I absolutely adore her youngest daughter. She's adorable and soft spoken but I equally care about their progress. I'm not more patient with my favorite student or praise her more. I want them both to succeed and get good grades. And when the mother invited me to a restaurant to express her gratitude I walked with them both hand in hand and spoke to them both. Only I know that I favor the youngest daughter over the other one not my peers, and you as a parent should do the same. No child ever asked to be born let alone have another sibling. And the last thing you should allow is hatred to grow in your household. Even if the one you favor is more talented you should always make sure your least favorite thrives under your care too. Respect equally, punish equally and reward equally as the rule when it comes to raising more than one daughter. 
Do not punish or hit your least favorite, but be tolerant towards your favorite, because you either let her hate you or her sibling or you make her believe that she doesn't deserve respect, and when it comes to men she will let men mistreat her instead of demanding respect, because that's the Stockholm Syndrome mentality what you allowed to manifest. Number 4 Be thankful that she can keep herself busy, but don't take advantage of it. A lot of mothers encourage their daughters to entertain themselves or keep their self busy so that they can leave the house for long hours or long shifts at work or to spend a lot of time alone but it's very wrong to do such a thing. Your daughter will be very lonely and value time killing activities like watching TV the whole day or stay in her room and do nothing over bonding and you are neglecting your parental duties. Together you should do healthy activities and have chats with each other every day so that when you pass away your wisdom will always be with her. You are not just her parent but a mentor, but most importantly her hero. Many daughters act detached or not interested in being around their mothers simply because you failed to nurture them. Puppies have behavior problems or suckle on things when they are taken away from their mothers too soon. Animals who have been taken from the wild will never be as skilled as their counterpart who grew up with their parents in the wilderness. And it's the same with your daughter. If you leave her alone a lot especially in the stage where she needs you the most it is the same effect as being taken away. You allow yourself to be separated from your daughter too soon and the results will be negative most of the time and might never be undone. In nature animals don't leave their cubs alone unless it's time to hunt and nature always gives great examples on how you need to live and raise your own children. Don't leave your daughter behind just because you want a break or a night out every day. You can't live the life you has before you became a mother without manifesting a havoc of problems for her. She might resent you, feel let down by you and you can't use the excuse that you need to work to bring food on the table. That's not her problem to deal with. You should have prepared for the arrival of your daughter physically mentally and financially. It's like wanting to become a lawyer, but you don't have the requirements and make your clients deal with your lack of competence. As a lawyer you can't tell your clients that you need a break and a vacation alone while the court date is near, and as a mother you shouldn't display this kind of glorified neglect. Number 5 Don't give your daughter the idea that she can live at your place as long as she wants. Many parents think it's cruel to send their daughters out of the house, but they need to leave the nest one day, no cub in the wild stays with their parents when they reach their full growth. Keeping them at home will stall their independence. They become lazy and not interested to chase any dream, because you are giving them a signal to their brain that they have nothing to worry about because you will be there to pay for everything. They will have a free roof above their head as long as you live they need to understand that they can't just have the rights of an adult, but not the responsibility, and you don't have to drop them like a hot potato, you can slowly let go. Like offer to pay half of her rent and expenses until she's financially stable so that she will experience that independence is challenging, but part of life because her mother won't live forever she will have to move on. And the last thing you need is have her desperately enter a relationship with a man because she can't look after herself. This inevitable stage of her life is like a falcon teaching her chicks how to fly as the final step to let go. If you want to have a daughter who is wise enough to make her own decisions then it must be done. Unless you are happy with an unsuccessful freeloader who still act like a child when she is over 30, and blame you every day that her life sucks. The things you do in the presence will be set in stone for the future. Do you want to be alright after 18 years? Then start preparing her to leave the nest when she develops a mind of her own. Number 6 Your daughters are only a burden if you allow it. If you do everything for her, you'll have an eternal baby to nurture. If you don't encourage her competitive spirit, don't give her a reason to be independent, or a reason not to respect your authority and just turn a blind eye towards misbehavior just because she's a kid you'll have a lazy hell spawn as a result. Number 7 Teach her to show boundaries by showing your boundaries to others. Daughters will not learn by talking them, but by showing them, if you decline someone's request like babysitting then stand strong and say no. When the person asks why? You say because I said so, don't explain yourself just say no. No means no and you can't be persuaded. When she sees you guard your boundaries with her own eyes she'll admire your strength and take your example. By standing tall you help her develop a backbone and she sees for herself that if you can do it then she can do it too. 
after all it's only your caregivers you should explain yourself to, and she will also have the same mind mindset with men, she will answer to none of them, number 8 don't make her wait for her belongings, for example, if you go for a swim have her own backpack ready with her portable console, her water and towel etc. So if she's thirsty or wants a towel to dry herself she can have access to it whenever she needs it, she doesn't have to wait until you have the time to get it for her, giving her the sense of having her needs met whenever she needs it by having your belongings at hand gives a level of security, that she's in control of what she allows and doesn't want to allow, letting her wait until she is touches to her belongings gives her a feeling that it's natural to be put on last place, and she will display the same behavior with men like allowing men to keep their belongings for safekeeping and she doesn't have the courage to say no, let her have access to her belongings and let her keep her own belongings for safekeeping will shape a strong will. A man wanted to keep my diploma for safekeeping and I allowed it, because I wasn't taught that it's within my right to deny anyone access to my belongings, the main culprit for such a weak will is because as a child I didn't have my sense of ownership over my own belongings encouraged, if a man dares to do such a thing now I would threaten to call the police, and I never want to speak to him ever again, but I wished I wasn't such a weakling back then, number 9 teach her to be kind for pets. Being mean to pets is the first sign of a sociopath, by teaching her to be friends with her pets will not make the animal live longer but she also develops empathy without being exposed to cruel things that happen in the world. She will also respect other people's pets and creates a heart for adoption. If you teach your daughter to be rewarding when her pets are good and be strict when the pets misbehave, nurturing and affectionate when the pet wants attention you are shaping her character towards others and it's very likely that she will adopt that method when she becomes a mother herself. Number 10 Make her aware that love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. Most children act out because they feel they are in a safety net, they will never be kicked out, have their allowance taken away, sent to boarding school simply because they got the memo that a parent's love means unconditional tolerance. For a daughter is a very bad message to give her because she will display the same behavior towards men. Women let men cheat, name calling, flake out because they love their current partner and it has always been a woman's downfall. And if love prevents you to make the right decisions then love men a little so that it takes a little to get rid of them when they show their true colors.